Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about lenses. Simply put, a lens is a device used in conjunction with a camera body to focus light onto a spot so that the image can be captured by the sensor in a camera or a piece of film. To do this, a lens uses curved glass or sometimes plastic elements to bend light through a process known as refraction. Light travels in straight lines until it hits some other material. If that material is transparent, it can slow the light down. This slowing of the light can also cause it to bend or change direction. This is the same effect you see in a glass of water with a straw in it. The straw will usually appear to be bent or disconnected from the part that's above the surface. Through proper control of this effect, a lens can be made to behave in some amazing ways. With long lenses, distant objects can be made to seem close up, or with wide lenses, a huge area very close to the camera can be captured. To demonstrate how a basic lens works, let's look at a very simplified version of a lens and camera body. As light enters the lens, it's refracted and focuses at one point inside the camera body. This is known as the focal point. This is where the frame of film or the sensor is in a digital camera. By moving the lens element forward or backward, the focal point is changed, bringing the image into or out of focus. Keep in mind this is a very simplified demonstration of a lens. Most lenses will have multiple optical elements inside them, sometimes more than 20. Along with these optical elements is another critical piece of the lens called the aperture. An aperture is essentially a hole at the back of the lens through which the light will pass before entering the camera body. Mechanically, the aperture is a series of overlapping blades that can be moved in such a way as to make the hole larger or smaller. The main function of the aperture is to increase or decrease the amount of light entering the camera. This allows for control in bright or dark lighting conditions. However, the effect of a large or small aperture on a photo can be drastic and therefore means that selecting a proper aperture setting is a little more complicated than just getting the right amount of light for your photo. This effect is known as depth of field and is one of the most important tools a photographer has at their disposal. Depth of field is basically the range of focus in an image. A shallow depth of field means that only a small portion of your photo is in focus. In this example, the foreground and distant background are out of focus while the joggers remain in focus. Through proper manipulation of depth of field, you can have a very small area in focus or the entire photo in focus. Generally, a smaller aperture, which lets in less light, will give you a larger depth of field in which most of your photo is in focus. Conversely, larger apertures, which let in more light, will have a more shallow depth of field. We'll take a more detailed look at depth of field in the composition, color, and light section of the course. Understanding f-stops is one of the most important things in all of photography, but also one of the most confusing. F-stop numbers are the numbers assigned to the size of the aperture in your lens. However, there's a catch. The larger the number, the smaller the aperture. A standard set of f-stop numbers can look like this. At f1.4, the aperture is at its widest possible position, meaning that the aperture is fully open and allowing as much light as it can into the camera. You may need to use this in very low light situations or to capture a shallow depth of field. At f16, the aperture is at its smallest possible position and is almost closed, allowing very little light into the camera. This would be used in very bright conditions and would give you a very large depth of field. Adding to the confusion is the somewhat arbitrary appearance of the relationship between the numbers. The reason for this is that an f number is actually the expression of the ratio between the focal length of the lens and the diameter of the aperture. For example, if the diameter of the aperture on a 50 mm lens is 25 mm, the ratio is 50 over 25, which equals 2, so f2. For the same lens, if the diameter of the aperture is 8.9 mm, the ratio is 50 over 8.9, which equals 5.6, so f5.6. These particular values were arrived at because each change in the diameter of the aperture per f-stop causes a doubling or halving of the amount of light entering the camera. So these numbers simply arose out of the physics and unfortunately the math just didn't lead to a simpler set of numbers. Now this math isn't overly important to know. You don't need to know this to take great pictures. But what you should take away from all this is the larger the f-stop number, the smaller the aperture. The smaller the f-stop number, the larger the aperture. The larger the f-stop number, the greater the depth of field. The smaller the f-stop number, the more shallow the depth of field. And when it comes to f-stops, not all lenses are created equal. 
most consumer lenses will have a maximum aperture of around f5.6 or f4, while many pro lenses are f2 or even lower. Unfortunately, with each lower f-stop value, the price of a lens will increase drastically. There's an enormous variety of lenses available to suit just about any photographic scenario. And while many of these are designed for very specialized photography, the most common difference between lenses is the focal length. Focal length is a distance measured in millimeters from the middle of the front lens element to the focal point inside the camera. These different focal lengths are often divided into three different categories, wide, normal, and long. Focal length changes with different camera formats, but it's most commonly measured in millimeters based on the 35mm camera. Now, aside from shooting wide angle shots or long shots, focal length also affects depth of field. Generally, wider lenses produce a larger depth of field with more in focus, and long lenses produce a more shallow depth of field. For the 35mm SLR camera, any lens of 28 millimeters or less is generally considered to be wide. Wide lenses capture a large area of view and are very handy for shooting in confined spaces. The wider the lens gets, the more distortion of the image will occur. In this photo, an extremely wide lens called a fisheye was used. Any lens below 16 millimeters is considered to be a fisheye. The distortion is very noticeable in the curvature of the horizon in the background. Close-up photos can become distorted as well. This distortion is particularly evident in photos of faces, often providing a comedic or surreal quality to a photo. Wide lenses generally produce a larger depth of field and are also good for capturing large areas in landscape photography. In these two examples, the photo was taken with the same position, but with a wide lens and a long lens. Notice the drastic difference in the area covered. Lenses around the 50 mm length are generally considered to be normal. These lenses capture an image that appears normal to the human eye and are more or less free of the distortions in wide or long lenses. These are good general purpose lenses useful for a wide variety of situations and their small size makes them very easy to carry. Focal lengths over 100 mm are considered long. These lenses function much like a telescope in that they allow you to capture distant objects close up. Long lenses are also great for capturing a shallow depth of field. Here, only a very tiny portion of the photo is in focus, while everything else remains out of focus. Another interesting effect of long lenses is known as compression. When a photo that covers a long distance is taken with a long lens, all of that distance is essentially flattened to appear on the two-dimensional surface of the picture. This compression effect is often very pleasing to the eye. A telephoto lens is a long lens whose actual physical length is shorter than its focal length. This is achieved with a complex grouping of optical elements within the lens. Despite being physically shorter, it will offer the same optical properties as its stated focal length, but are much easier to use due to their compact size. A prime lens is a lens with a fixed focal length. These lenses generally offer extremely high quality, sharp, distortion-free images. The downside, however, is the need to change lenses frequently if a different focal length is needed, and carrying a large number of different prime lenses around isn't all that convenient for your average photographer. A zoom lens overcomes these problems by giving you a variety of focal lengths in one lens. Aside from capturing wide angles up close or zooming in to capture distant subject matter, different focal length lenses can be used to capture the same photo but with different characteristics. In these three examples, the subject hasn't moved and is framed in more or less the same position but with three different focal lengths, 24, 70, and 200 millimeters. Although the framing is similar in each case, the photos become drastically different in a couple of ways. At 24 millimeters, the background is still in focus and the place structure is completely visible and very small relative to the subject matter. The face is also slightly distorted, appearing slightly rounded. At 70 millimeters, with the subject framed in the same position, the background is now softer or more out of focus and the place structure is magnified, filling more of the frame. The round distortion of the face is less pronounced. 
At 200 millimeters, the background is now very soft and the play structure is magnified to the point of filling the frame while the subject remains in the same position. The round distortion of the face is now completely gone. A comparison of the three shows how lens selection can make a drastic difference to a photo's appearance. So try to get accustomed to the behavior of different focal lengths and choose the lens to best suit the look you're going for. So I hope this has given you some idea of what lenses can do and how to use them. The best way to learn the effects of different focal lengths is to shoot as much as possible. Try using different lenses in different situations or using different lenses in the same situation and compare the results after. Used properly, lens selection can offer amazing creative possibilities.